Whenever I design something, I always consider comfort as the one of the primary thing of the space. The elevation of a house is almost like an advertisement to what's inside. Apunar ghator gathon ene hua usit, ji apunar poriyalor prayojan puran kori bo paribo. Layout ene, ji apunak aji khukdi bo. Aru design ene, jod bhovishyotar planning or kotha monotroka hobo. Bedroom or size or praloi kitchen or gathon khoi li loike, hokolu kini ei layout or antar gat nirdharan kori lua hoy. Jate apuni apunar ghorat aaram dayok onubhav kori bo pare. Ei onubhavok jate bastovot pori noto kori bo pari, khaye ami apunar babe loya hisu eta bichek series. New Voco presents Ghar Khajak Nijar, a News 18 initiative. Yaal thapuni kewol Ghar Khajar kotha heje janibo ene na hoi. Barancho ene hokolo dikhar kotha janwa hobo, jibor apunar hopunar ghar to khajute janato uti koi prayojaniyo. Apunar ghar to bahiror aru bhitoror gathan kene hua usit, e kothar pratiyo atyanta manojog diya usit. Ghar layout or design, or thad apunar ghar to khaji hojwar pisot kene dekha jabo, khe planning ok naksat pori nato kori bolo gya hoi. Our ghar ka jote yar atyadhik gurutto ase. So the layout is basically a 2D drawing which shows the entrance, how the uh, how the entrance is, then how do you enter into your living room, bedroom, kitchen, the entire floor area. Design development is the next step once the layout is finalized. Layout finalization is very very important. Once the layout is finalized, then architect jump onto the design development. Now how this design development happens is your 2D drawing takes a shape of 3D. So how the elevation of the entire house is going to look like, how the internal areas are going to look like, how the staircase will go up. The walkthrough is very conveniently possible. It's very much normal practice these days in everywhere industry. Jiti apunar hopunar ghartur layoutor kotha hai, तेतिया मनात रखा उती कोई प्रयोजन जे आपनार घर्टोर हकलो ठाई अरु हकलो सुककुन जथो सित अनुपात अरु आकार और हुआ उसित। तेतिया है आपनार घर्टो केवल देखाते ही धुनिया न होए पर अंचो थाकी बोलोई को उपजुक्त होबो। I think when you are working on smaller individual houses it's very important to understand how to maximize the plot or what the requirements for the client is. When it comes to proportion of spaces, there are many ways to approach it. The easiest way to sort of get a mathematical ratio is to apply the golden ratio. I think just as a very simple example would be that uh, if you're in a very narrow room which is extremely tall, you're going to feel a little uncomfortable, you know, in a certain way versus being in a more perfectly proportioned room which makes you feel more relaxed. Simple things like room proportions can psychologically make you feel better, which make you sort of perform better in that space. Apunar hopunar ghar to layout jiman atya washyok, himanei gurutta purna hol ee kotha to nirnoi kora, jay apunar ghar to bahiror para kene dekha usit. Gharar aag phalar aru pis phalar aangkha, aru tar kaakh bilak kene koi bonwa hobo, ee bilaku hol design element ore aangkha. The elevation is how your building looks. Frankly, it does not depict the inner strength of the building, but it could have a particular style. Like somebody could say that I want my building to look maybe some retro style. Some somebody would say look like a Victorian bungalow. Somebody could say I want some Roman elements added to it. Somebody would say I want exposed brickwork. Somebody would come and say that yes, I want. Uh, routine old type of tiles to be put on the roof so all these are the choice of the owners and again the uh, the geometry and the scale of all these factors should be complementing the type of the structure normally an elevation is just a cladding it is something you add on to it it has mostly cosmetic appeal you can say it does not in any way contribute to the strength of the building you are trying to build a house in guwahati where the rainfall is a lot and you will find instead of flat roofs, a sloping roof is required to ensure proper drainage or runoff of the water. But in this case also, it is possible to hide that the slope of that building. You could model your elevation in such a way that the slope is not seen from all sides. So you could have a totally plain or a square or a rectangular elevation to your buildings. This could easily be done by adding some parapets, etc. things. Like for example, my house is like this and I have a slope going here. 
So if I build a parapet here in this particular area, then from the outside it is going to look square. People will not be able to know unless they come inside whether it is sloping or whether it's flat. So your elevation could make your building look different than what it actually is. So in this way you could maintain the aesthetics of the house and also uh, not compromise on the functionality of uh, the building. Elevation should always go with the environment and it should always blend with nature. For an example, if we look at Assam and the North East, we find heavy rainfall. The houses have sloping roof. If we see towards Kashmir, where there is a lot of snowfall, if you look at the slope, it's like more like this. If we see towards the western part, because of the heat and summer, they tend to sleep on their terrace. So, the roof is usually flat. So, elevation plays a major role while designing a space or a house. The elevation of a house is almost like an advertisement to what's inside. As a designer, we tend to think a little bit too dimensional which becomes a 2D elevation and then that gets three-dimensionally built. I'll try and give you a few examples with a few simple diagrams. Say this is the elevation, the front view of your house. So it's a fairly large sort of a elevation. We've got like a door over here. We've got a series of windows which could be in different shapes. You can have windows in square, arches, geometric shapes. I mean, there's no real limit. And here we have, say, these long slender windows which add up. So these elements over here, what you're seeing, are what start defining your elevation. And these can respond to the design style that you need. Uh, there are so many other aspects in this. Like, say, for example, there's a lot of sun that comes on this side of the house. We're going to try and add a chajja over here to sort of like reduce that. Uh, you're going to try and add maybe a screen, like a jali, what you see in a lot of traditional Indian havelis, you know. These jalis were actually very functional from a climatological aspect beyond design. So a lot of these features, they come together and they define your elevation. And this is completely up to you of how uh, minimal or detailed or, you know, in a word, how crazy you want it to be, that would be very much up to you. Apunar Hopunar Ghorto Hajar Homoyot, Apunar Layout or Elevation Compondi Onuman Hoikon Nishoy. Kinto A Planning Oak, Paperot Lock Kora Agote, Ghor Hajar Kamor Homoyot, Arukisu Hong Kok, Pradhan Kothar Proti Monojok Dia Onibarjo. Jibur Hol, all of technical. There are conditions on the plot also which he needs to understand while taking forward for a construction. Now let me give you an example. There is a plot of land which the person wants to construct upon. Now this is abutting a road, for example. And there is a setback which is reserved or, or a reservation put on the regional plan or by the local bodies uh, for, for that area or a zone. Now this is the plot, this is the road and this is the setback area. Now a person needs to be aware that when there is a setback area, that area can be called to be surrendered by the government any time in future. So when construction plans are put up, this setback area has to be taken into consideration and construction cannot happen onto the setback area. The person should be aware of what is the boundary line for starting the project construction. And in suppose the FS and FIR calculations also depend upon this kind of a setback area. So while there are balconies or anything which are proposed in the project, which may be jutting out beyond the boundary line, a person needs to know what are the consequences of such construction. The trend many times becomes that people try to avoid some columns or try to pick lesser columns. This is what we call as lesser redundancy in the structure. Redundancy is like when you have adequate number of columns. Uh, to take an example, when I am having five columns and there is an earthquake, and one of the columns there fails. So there, I have only four remaining columns and if they are not adequately interconnected also, you will find that these remaining columns will not be able to help in picking up the structure or holding it stable. But in the other way around, if I am having 10 columns 
and they are again adequately interconnected with each other then you will find that when there is an seismic event and there is some weakness in the structure maybe one or two columns are not behaving as they should be then you will find that the remaining eight columns will come together and help in distributing this load to other areas and generally you will find that your building remains stable in spite of all these seismic actions. People would like to have uh, what we generally in uh, structural terms call it as cantilevers where your beams etc are supported only on one side. The other side is free and hanging and it is cantilevering out or projecting out from your main structure a lot. But these are very critical areas of your building and they should be properly calculated. Generally, the IS code would specify a limit for the deflections, but cantilevers would tend to deflect a lot more than a conventional beam. It is as, as much as four times. And all these deflections are going to affect your structure. They could lead to cracks. Suppose I'm building a column-free structure and uh, my spans are huge, 10 meters. Though the code will allow me a deflection of 40 mm, the moment there is a deflection of 40 mm in my structure, it is going to affect the serviceability of my structure. Like my tiles are going to break, my wires are going to be a little disconnected because of all this. My windows could uh, break or windows could see some cracks along the edges. My sills would break. So we have to be very careful. If you want to make a house or design a house, then we don't have any experts in the house. We don't have any experts in the house. आर्किटेक्टे घर डिजाइन कर और बहु क्षेत्र क्लायेन्टे घर भर सजा इंटेरियर डिजाइनारक दायित्व दिए एक्सपार्टरे कम हल निजाबिया और एलोर काम मजल सामंजस्यता लो तो अपना घर तो अतव प्रयोजन वेन एवर आई डिजाइन सामथिंग आई अलवेज कन्सिडार कम्फर्ट एज दान अफ द प्राइमेरी थिंग अफ द स्पेस इंटेर डिजाइनिंग फर मी इज कम्बिनेशन अफ कम्फर्ट कल्चर एंड फांगशनेलिटी of a space which blends with the architecture to provide a aesthetically beautiful area to live in it also depends on the client and the requirement of the client as well the material the geography the topography climate everything once you enter your space enter the bedroom or the living space you just want to relax sit down and just be comfortable over the area so that is comfort in the interior designing is for example if you're going for a very indian ethnic look lot of the detailing that you're going to use in your house by detailing i mean like say a water fountain or the way your landscape features are done the way uh, you've got uh, your window detailing the jalis in the house they will all be features which are following a certain indian style to bring that indian ethnic look to your house if you want to do a very modern sort of a style a lot of these design features are going to be more streamlined more modern more true to the material while the construction work is going on owner ne interior and furniture ke bare mein zarur sochna chahiye because agar ye activity simultaneously ho jati hai to there will be a substantial cost reduction If you are planning for good furniture inside the house, आपको अच्छा किचन बनाना हो बेडरूम्स एस्थेटिकली अच्छी करनी हो you should simultaneously think of interior designer who will be a part of your project. घर सजार जापथ अपनी बहु विभिन्न प्रक्रिया मानि चलिया है और बहु संख्यक लोकर सहित काम है आहक जानी लो निर्माण कार्य स्तर अत्यावश्यक पदक्षेप समूह की यह समय टीम वर्क और की गुरुत्व Many times in a project you have an architect who has designed the house but the client wants to hire a separate interior designer to bring a different approach to the interior of the project There are multiple ways to approach such projects usually the architect and the interior designer they tend to have a few meetings jointly with the client to understand what was the concept used by the architect on basis of which he's designed the whole look of the project and that includes all the wall surfaces the elevations of the house the volumes inside the house once that is sort of understood and what common mutual style has to be followed the interior designer would try and reflect either the language of the house which is shown in the elevations the features like the balconies the windows they have certain design styles to them they would be reflected with the interior of the house through the materials and the way the interior design process is done 
while doing the layout of the project or the plot itself there has to be an adherence to the local building bylaws as also the development regulations building bylaws are issued in every area by every planning authority or the local body in the particular area or the region aap construction jab karte ho to architect basically who is responsible for main structure designing then interior designer who is into a planning of all fixed furniture inside the house and contractor who is going to execute all the two activities together there should be a proper teamwork between these three etia loike ami kotha patilu apunar hopunor ghor tor bahir phalor gathoni aru tar hoyte jorito prakriya boror bikhoy birotir bisot janiboloi lom ene kisuman kotha je apunar ghor to kori tulibo bohu upojogi सुरक्षित तथा धुनिया पुनर स्वागत अपना सपोन घर तो सजार जथेष संख्यक प्रक्रिया सम्बन्धे अपनी इतिम्य निश्चय जानिले घर गठनशैली फाइनल कर बेलिका और दूटा कथा आए जार ऊपर एक्सपार्टे बहुत जोर दिए प्रथम तो हल आपनर घर लेकिन जो पथ तो और तर सज द्वित हल मुख्य द्वार गठनशैली एवरी प्लट हेज टू हेव एन एक्सेस रोड अगर आपने गेटेड कम्युनिटी में लिया प्लट तो वहाँ पे बाई डिफल्ट आपके प्लट तक एक वेल ऑर्गेनाइज रोड रहेगा ही रहेगा अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट अगर आपने कहीं आउटस्कर्ट्स में कहीं दूर जगह पर प्लट लिया नॉर्मली वहाँ पर भी रोड इज ऑलवेज डिफाइंड Uh, gates are probably the first thing that uh, you or your visitor would interact with when entering a property apart from the security or safety aspect of having a gate there are multiple ways you can approach the gate design usually when uh, you want to show a very grand entrance the gate is the first thing where it starts from if it is very well landscaped uh, mixed with plants also important to know that the gate should be very well lit because a lot of people are going to sort of access the home post sunset so the gate has to have that important feature ghar to kebol duniya huay usit na hoy logote i upojogi hoy pora to himani awashyok ajikali radhunik design korote architect aru engineer hokole iar proti sampurno monojog diye jate ghar to kebol mati dukhor or pora thoka eta sadharan building jen na lage i think when uh, you're sort of designing your house from scratch it's very important to make sure your living requirements are taken care of your lifestyle is taken care of important to know that how much of time you spend outdoors versus the indoors from a checklist perspective it's just sort of important to note that be prepared by sort of like preparing your requirements your priority list start with those lists and then choose a professional wisely in that field who can cater to that always make sure that you have sufficient natural light in all rooms it not only sort of saves you on your electricity but it just sort of makes your house more vibrant when you have natural light filtering in i always suggest that please include lot of green inside and outside the house it's uh, also important to make sure the house is very well ventilated there's cross wind happening you can use the house in different parts of the day without air conditioning and great design can help you that in most climatic even hot regions there are ways to naturally reduce the temperature inside the house so trying to implement little bit of climatic features which help you in living or power saving would be a great way to approach a project as well it's the key thing to sustainable living you know uh, the simplest example of say air conditioning back in the day before air conditioners people used to take wet linen fabric soak it in water and put it at the windows and let the wind flow through in sort of hot cities you know where you have a bad summer people used to make screens out of khas what is used to make sharbat you know and that had a very strong cooling effect if you see villages where you have traditional indian architecture the way they use clay and mud for construction the thickness of the walls they actually help in reducing the temperature inside the space versus the temperature outside so you can use ingenious solutions to achieve what you want to do on your project between you and the design team you can always figure out a very economical solution also there are some green building parameter that should be followed as well jaise ki solar panel use kar sakte for water heating and for illumination 
Secondly, you must use rainwater harvesting technology so that groundwater table will be increased. Then vermicompost is also a method wherein you can use wet garbage and you can prepare a manure at home which can be used for a garden. Then along the periphery of the house, when uh, you construct a compound wall, try to form a vertical garden with the creepers and with the small plants so that it gives a pure air, it improves the air quality, it gives the coolness to the structure and uh, it acts as a sound barrier also. One should always see that if there is enough storage in the house or not, where he will place the sofa set, where he will place the dining set, where the bed will be, if there is enough space for the cabinets in the room, अगर हम बेड और कैबिनेट्स पास प्लेस कर रहे हैं तो वहाँ का दरवाजा ओपन हो रहा है कि नहीं सो दीज आर द बेसिक थिंग्स वन शुड कन्सिडर वाइल गेटिंग स्पेस अपना सपन घर तो मने विचरा डिजाइन कर समय इक बन खरस और बजेटर कथा पहरी जो उचित नुनी सुनिश्चित भावे यार आँचनी तैयार कर उचित प्रोजेक्ट कॉस्ट जो रहती है किसी भी घर की किसी भी प्रोजेक्ट की मेनली तीन फैक्टर्स पे डिपेंड करती है नंबर वन कॉस्ट ऑफ सीमेंट नंबर टू कॉस्ट ऑफ स्टील एंड नंबर थ्री कॉस्ट ऑफ फ्लोरिंग टाइल्स जिसको हम बोलते हैं बाकी जो रहते हैं फैक्टर्स लाइक रॉ मटेरियल लाइक ब्रिक्स सैंड प्लम्बिंग मटेरियल इलेक्ट्रिकल मटेरियल दे कैरी वेटेज बट टू लिटिल लेसर एक्सटेंट सो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट ये तीन चीज़ों का ध्यान रखे और इसके ऊपर पूरे प्रोजेक्ट कॉस्ट डिपेंड करता है Usually, owner should take interest in selection of the material because ultimately he is going to stay in his house. So, कौन सा material लेना चाहिए क्या color के tiles होने चाहिए ये सारों में अगर वो interest ले contractor के साथ में जाके select करे तो it is always beneficial for the owner. As far as possible, do not compromise on cost because it is a lifetime project. So do not compromise on cost. Get the best material from the market and use it for your home. Architect, जब drawing issue करता है, तो आपको family के साथ में बैठ के अपनी need समझ के वो drawings को freeze करना बहुत जरूरी है, ताकि बाद में बार बार rework या changes ना करना पड़े. घर डिजाइन गठन और लेआउटर विषय भबा चिंता करो सामान्य असुविधाजनक हम पे कि तुम्हें बेसि असुविधाजनक पे जदिहे यूर कथा भबा चिंता कर घर सजार दायित्व सकोरे जीवन लेकिन और सही समय आम धर्य सहकार और विचक्षणत काम करो नितान आवश्यक इगे आज विदाय लबाई अहबार शोत कथ पातीम आपनर घर तो सको बतर और प्रत्याान सजुरी तलार विषय घर सजक निजर आम विशेष सीरीज आजिल मात्र इमानी